Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Before we get started with our yin class, take the opportunity to grab all the props that you have available to you. So standard would be a bolster, two or three blankets, and two blocks. But of course, you can grab pillows in place of a bolster. And if you don't have yoga blocks, just grab extra blankets. And the more props that you have, the more opportunity you'll have to soften into some of these poses. But of course, props are not always required in yin. So once you have your props, we will get started in our first pose, which is a crowd favorite. So come to your hands and your knees and bring your knees together and your feet together. Tuck all of your toes across the floor, including your pinky toes. And then you'll sit your hips back towards your heels. Now option one will be to stay with your hands forward and upper body leaning forward. If you need a blanket in between your heels and your hips, you can place that there. Option two, walk your hands closer to your knees and you can support yourself with blocks on your hands. Option three, hands to your thighs and sit up in toe stretch. So this is a pretty intense pose. So do your best to breathe deep and slow. And we will hold here for about two minutes. Starting now, try to soften through your lower body muscles and try to allow your hips to be heavy towards your heels. We're about coming to the halfway point. Just a few more breaths. If you need to come out of the pose early, feel free to do so. About 30 more seconds. Wherever your hands are, go ahead and walk them forward. Hips over your knees, untuck your toes, and tap the tops of your feet into the floor. Beautiful. And then keep the tops of your feet down. Sit your hips towards your heels again, and again you can place a blanket in between your heels and your hips. Option one, you'll sit upright, or maybe even walk your hands back and lean back a little bit for ankle stretch. Or you can take child's pose, any variation. So traditional child's pose, belly on your thighs, forehead to the ground or a block and arms down by your sides. Or you can take wide-legged child's pose with your knees out wide and arms forward. So just stretching into the tops of our feet and our ankles. So if you haven't already guessed, the theme for this class is our feet. Most of the poses today, even though they won't target the ankles and feet specifically, we will do different variations of traditional yin poses in order to target a little bit more into our feet, ankles, and heels. So as you're holding the poses, allow yourself to simply observe the sensations that arise. In yin, we do not use any specific alignments any specific actions or force within our body, but we let our body come into the pose as is, support it with props, 
And with time and gravity, we allow our body to gently open up on its own time. So we're about halfway through. Any adjustments that you need to make, feel free to make them. So maybe you're in ankle stretch and you want to go into a variation of child's pose, or maybe you've been hanging out in child's pose and you want to try out any variation of ankle stretch, sitting upright or leaning back. And just allow yourself to observe the sensation that you're feeling. And without trying to make it a certain way or trying to make sense of it or think if it's right or wrong, allow it to simply be. Wherever you are, take a slow breath in and out. Beautiful. Whether you're in ankle stretch, leaning back or upright, or in child's pose, make your way to tabletop. And then from tabletop pose, just take some cat and cows just moving through your spine. And then you can either go into a brief downward facing dog with your toes tucked, sending your hips up and back, or you can do marches, just stepping one foot back and stretching through your heel and your calf, and then taking it back to center and then stepping the other foot back. And then we will move into a seat. So feel free to sit up on a blanket or two to lift your hips off the ground. Our next pose will be a variation of deer. So for deer pose, you'll place your right shin in front of you like you're going to sit in cross legs. And then your left shin will be off to the side. And your left knee can be close to your right heel or you can take it further away. And then your left foot will be pointed towards the back edge of your mat. So the same position as an ankle stretch. And your right foot will be in a light flexion, like in toe stretch. Now option one, you'll walk your hands forward and you'll fold directly over your right shin. You can use any props like a block or a bolster underneath your elbows or forearms. Option two, deer twist, you'll turn your chest towards your right leg and your right side, and you can either lower down to your elbows, maybe with blocks underneath them or a block underneath your forehead, or you can take your bolster or a stack of pillows long ways away from you and fold on top of that. So either deer fold, which targets your right outer hip, or deer twist, which gets a little bit into your outer right hip, but it's more for your spine. And your left foot is in a pointed position, which is also called plantar flexion. So you're getting a little bit of a target onto your left ankle as you hold the position that you're in. So allow yourself to settle in. And just let your breath be in a natural rhythm. The one thing I love about yin is it lets me be fully connected to my breath. So often when our nervous system can be bothered and we feel stress or anxiety, the breath will kind of get out of our control and we'll start to breathe a little bit shorter and more shallow, maybe even faster. But the beautiful thing about the breath that we can realize is that it gives us our control back over our nervous system. So when anxiety and stress comes in and our nervous system goes into that fight, flight, or freeze mode, or the sympathetic, we can then turn to the breath and work on controlling the breath, slowing it down, and that allows us to tap back into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest system. 
So use your breath throughout the class as a barometer to let you know how your body is feeling. When the pose starts to get more intense, as your breath may start to speed up or become a little bit more short, can you take control of the breath and allow it to slow down? And by slowing down the breath with our own control, we can then influence our own nervous system to soften and we can allow our body to soften even into the intensity. So we have a little bit less than halfway to go. If you would like to continue to stay in your variation of deer, feel free to stay. Maybe take a couple of props away. Or you can switch the variation. So if you were in the fold, maybe go to the twist. And if you're in the twist, maybe go to the fold over your right shin. Just a few more breaths. And if you need to rebound out of the pose early, always know that you can come out even when we're holding it for a certain amount of time. You never have to hold the pose the entire time that I suggest. Just listen to your own body and when your body tells you it's time to come out of the pose, always remember that you can. Take a deep inhale and exhale. So we'll rebound, slowly come out of your pose. Turn to face the front if you were in the twist and one leg at a time, extend your legs out in front of you. Give them a little bit of a shimmy and shake. Then just pause, take a notice how you feel between your legs, between your feet. And then we'll go to the other side. So left shin parallel to the front, foot in a light flexion. And your right shin will be out to the side with your knee up against your heel or a little bit further away. And you'll point your right toes towards the back wall. Option one, fold forward over your left shin. Use any props to support you. Option two, twist to the left and then either lower down to your elbows on the floor or blocks or use a bolster or a stack of pillows underneath your torso. Once you've found your shape, settle in and then just breathe. Notice sensation. And always remember that if at any point in time you need to come out of the pose, you have your own permission to do so. We are about halfway through. Continue to stay where you are. If you would like to remove or add props, feel free to do so. And if you would like to switch the pose and go to the other variation, you are more than welcome to. 
and then just resettle in. Continue to notice your breath. Notice the body sensation. And as you notice those, also pay attention to the mind. Notice thoughts. It's easy in yin for the mind to wander off to things that have already happened or things that have yet to happen. And when that pulls our attention away from the pose, away from our breath, we allow ourselves to notice when it happens and then come back to the breath and come back to the body sensations. And by doing this, the practice becomes much more than a physical practice, but it becomes a practice of meditation, especially with this yin practice. Wherever you are, take a slow breath in and release. So come out of your pose, untwist if you're in the twist, rebound, extend both legs out in front of you, give them a shimmy and shake. And then just take a moment to pause. You can keep your legs straight or come to cross-legged position. Notice how you feel in your spine, your hips, your legs, and your feet. And then from here, we will make our way back to hands and knees, tabletop position. So from tabletop, go ahead and place any blankets that you need underneath your knees. And then step your right foot in between your hands at the front. So coming to a low lunge position. And since our target is our feet, we will do a variation called overstepping dragon. So you'll scoot your right foot back maybe two or three inches, and then allow your knee to go either in line with your toes or past your toes, just to the point before your right heel feels like it has to lift off the ground. And then once you're there, Hands will be slightly in front of your foot, so that way they're supporting you, and you can also have your hands on blocks. And then your left knee, you can either keep it a little bit closer underneath your left hip, or you can scoot it back to get a little bit more into your left thigh. Now, if you find that this is too intense for your front leg, especially your knee joint, you can keep your knee above your heel, and then take a blanket or towel fold it or roll it up so that way it's a little bit more thick, and then place that underneath the front of your right foot. So that'll put your right foot into more flexion, and you'll get the target into your Achilles tendon, but you don't have the extra added load of your knee going forward. And if you find that this pose is just too much on either of your knees, hips, or ankles, another alternative is to come to your back, You'll draw your right knee to your chest, either hold onto the inside or outside of your right foot, maybe hold onto your ankle or the back of your knee, and your right foot will point up to the sky, your right knee will bend towards your right armpit and the floor, and your left leg will either be straight forward or left leg will be bent. So drag and lunge on your back, and if you're holding on to your foot, then you'll still get the same target of your Achilles heel just like you would in overstepping dragon. Once you've arrived in the shape that suits your body today, settle in, tap into your breath, notice sensation, and as you notice your breath and sensation, whenever you find that the mind wanders off to something that has already happened in the past or something that has yet to happen in the future. Just come back to center and anchor into your breath and the body sensations which are happening in the now.
So we are about halfway through. If you are doing the overstepping dragon variation, we have held for long enough so you can back out of that and just let your right heel be underneath your right knee for the traditional shape. You can also move it into wing dragon by scooting your right foot to the outside edge of your mat and letting your hands be on the inside either on blocks or maybe lower down your forearms to blocks. Wherever you are, take a deep breath in and let it go. So if you're in any of the dragon lunge variations, go ahead and gently step back to tabletop pose. You'll rebound taking some cat and cows or maybe move your hips around or even go to child's pose. If you are on your back for reclining dragon, just draw both knees into your chest, give yourself a hug, or maybe take windshield wipers of your knees. And then you will go to the other side. So for a dragon lunge, you'll step your left foot through. We'll start with overstepping dragon. So you can either scoot your left heel back two or three inches and then let your knee go forward. Support yourself by taking your hands slightly in front of your feet on blocks or the floor. If that is too much on your knee, then you can take a rolled up blanket or towel, place that underneath the front of your left foot, so it puts your left foot into more flexion, and your left heel will just be in line with your knee. Right knee can adjust any way that you need to get sensation into your front right thigh. And if you are on your back, just draw your left knee to your chest, hold either onto the outside or inside of your left foot, Maybe hold on to your ankle or the back of your knee. Your left foot will point up to the sky, left knee bends towards your armpit and the floor, and your right leg will either be bent or straight out in front. When you found your variation, come into your breath. Keep noticing the body sensation, noticing the breath. Noticing when thoughts wander off and when they do, just gently bring yourself back. Sometimes it's easy to give ourselves a hard time when the mind wanders off, but truly this practice doesn't have any goals, or at least any goals that are attributed to being right or wrong. The goal, the big goal of the practice of yoga, whether yin or hatha or vinyasa, is just to constantly remain present with ourselves and honor ourselves. And part of honoring who we are is realizing that we're human beings and the mind will just do what the mind wants to do. And whenever we notice and catch ourselves wandering off, we just simply bring ourselves back home. We are at the halfway point, so if you've been doing the overstepping dragon with knee forward past your toes, you can go ahead and back out of it now, or you can stay. 
And you can also adjust to winged dragon variation with your left foot out to the side, hands on the inside on blocks, or maybe forearms to blocks. If you're on your back, feel free to stay where you are and just keep breathing. Keep staying present and keep observing. Deep inhale, release the breath, and slowly release the pose. So to rebound, if you're in a lunge, step back to table, cat cows, move your hips, or maybe just take child's pose. If you're on your back, release your left foot. You can either draw your knees into your chest for a hug, maybe set your feet to the floor in windshield wipers, or maybe you take a mini shavasana with your legs extended out in front. If you are on your back, go ahead and make your way up. And then our next pose will be supported malasana or supported squat. So grab a bolster or you can stack blankets, pillows, or even use a block at any height. And you are going to sit on top of those props or prop. And you're going to take your legs into the squat position. So your feet will be hips distance or a little bit wider. You'll turn your toes out and your knees are bent. And for your hands, traditional shape is hands at heart with your elbows on the insides of your thighs. But you can just let your hands go out in front of you with your fingertips tented on the floor and arms straight. And I like this supported variation because I don't have to rely on my feet. I can just let my hips ground into whatever prop is underneath it. And I'll still get the inner thigh stretch through my inner legs. So again, our attention is on our feet, ankles, and heels. You may already start to feel sensation in your heels here in this position. But if you would like to get a little bit more sensation, Take a rolled up blanket or a couple of rolled up towels and like that variation of overstepping dragon, you'll place them underneath the fronts of your feet. So the fronts of your feet will be higher than your heels. That puts your feet into more flexion and then that'll target more into your Achilles tendon. Now if your feet are flat and your inner thighs are fine but this position is uncomfortable for your ankles and your heel, then you can either add more props underneath your hips or you can take that folded up blanket or folded up towels and place them underneath your heels so that way you lift your heels higher than the height of your toes. And then the other alternative from this position is just to sit on the floor or a blanket Place the soles of your feet together, knees apart, and then fold forward in butterfly. You can also come back to wide-legged child's pose and maybe even do with your toes tucked so that way you're still getting sensation into your heels. The one thing I love about the yin practice is that it's not so much about the pose, but it's more about the target area. So. In any of my videos, especially Yin, always do what is best for your body. Maybe it's the pose that I cue, maybe it's any of the alternatives or variations, or maybe you simply just do something that feels intuitively good for your body and you rely on the time that I'm giving in the pose to hold that position.
So we're about coming into the halfway point. Feel free to make any adjustments that you need. Maybe you're adding props or taking props away. Or maybe you're switching up the variation or going to a different alternative. And of course, if you need to come out of the pose at any point in time, always know you can rebound early. Take a deep inhale and exhale. So for the rebound, if you are in supported yogi squat, just take your hands out in front of you. Any props underneath your feet, move them aside. And then lift your hips up into a wide-legged forward fold. And just take as big of a bend in your knees, grab opposite elbows, let your head hang. And if you took butterfly, just go ahead and extend your legs long out in front of you. Maybe bend your knees and take windshield wipers. If you went to child's pose, you can just come to tabletop and take some cat and cows. And then we will make our way to a seat. So once you are in your seat, go ahead and turn to face one of the long edges of your mat. And once you do so, sit up on a blanket or a pillow. You'll take your right leg out to the side to a half wide V. Your left foot will be in towards your pelvis like a half cross-legged. Another variation that you can take is take your left shin off to the side. So it's like the other half of deer legs. And if you do that, have your toes pointed like you did in deer. And whichever variation you're doing with your left leg, you will turn away from your right leg, have either your right hand or elbow on a block or just have your hand on your shin, and then start to side lean towards your right leg. So keep working on turning your chest away from your legs so you're targeting the entire left side of your ribs. And you can either just keep your left arm by your side, or you can take a half wrap with your left forearm around your low back. And if you need to place a blanket underneath your right knee to soften through that knee joint, feel free to do so. And then we'll just stay here for a little bit, targeting our side body, as well as our right hamstrings. Your right foot will just be in a very light flexion. So try to find that place between pointed and flexed, and then just allow it to simply be.
We'll be here for just a few more breaths. If you need to come out of the pose, make any adjustments, add or take away props, feel free to do so. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Slowly come out of your side bend. If you have your left leg in half deers, carefully undo that left leg. And then we'll switch sides. So left leg straight out to a half wide V. Your right foot can be in the traditional dragonfly shape, or you can take your right leg into half deer, shin off to the side, and your toes will point back. Turn away from your left leg, either left hand on a block, your shin, or you can have your elbow on a block, and then start to side lean towards your left leg. Place any prop underneath your left knee in order to support that leg, and have your left foot just in a very light flexion. So whatever is the most natural position for your left foot. And then just continue to notice your breath. Notice the sensations, maybe noticing the specific differences that you feel in this side compared to the other. And whenever you notice that thoughts have wandered off, just simply guide them back to the present. Holding here just for a few more breaths. Take a deep inhale and let it go. Slowly come out of your side bend. And carefully undo your right leg if you have it off to the side in half deer. Extend both legs out in front of you, give them a shimmy and shake. Then lean back onto your hands, bend your knees, and with your feet on the ground, just take a gentle windshield wiper of your knees from left to right. So our second to final pose will be any backbend. We have three options you can do. Option one, you'll come to your belly. Your elbows will stack underneath your shoulders and your forearms will either be parallel or you can interlace your fingers. So Sphinx pose. And you can either keep your head upright or place a block in front of you on the highest height and lower your forehead to the block. Second alternative will be to come to your back. You'll take a block, bolster, or any props that you have that you can stack and place it underneath your hips. And your knees can stay bent or your legs can extend forward. So supported bridge. Option three will be a supported back bend or supported fish pose. 
You can either do the two block heart opener variation with one block on the medium height underneath the middle of your back, right around the area of your shoulder blades, and then a second block on the highest height underneath your head. You can also do this with a bolster, a rolled up blanket, or a couple of stacked pillows or blankets, and just lay down along the length of your spine with your hips on the ground. And if backbending is something that is not desirable or optimal for you today, then just do any symmetrical pose that you prefer. So be intuitive with it. Some alternatives could be seated forward fold with your legs together out in front and fold over them. You can do legs up the wall with your legs straight up against a wall or maybe even place a block or bolster underneath your hips and lift your legs. You can also lay flat onto your back and take reclining butterfly with the soles of your feet together and knees apart. So either any of the backbends that I suggested or any symmetrical pose that you want or need. And this will be our second to last pose, so allow yourself to settle in. And see if in this posture you can work towards slowing down your breath. And even slowing down your breath to the point where your exhales are slightly longer than your inhales, maybe even double the length of your inhales. Take a deep inhale and let it go. So find your rebound. If you are on your belly for Sphinx, that can be laying flat on your belly with your hands underneath your head or going to child's pose. If you did supported back bend with props underneath your back, just roll to one side off of those props and just rebound on your side. And if any, you are taking any position that's on your back, like supported bridge, waterfall, or reclining butterfly, remove any props off to the side, and just lay down in a mini shavasana, legs extended out in front of you, arms by your sides. And then we will move into the final rebound. Final pose of ease and stillness, Shavasana. Traditionally, Shavasana is legs extended out, arms by your sides. And I always invite you to use props to your advantage. So something underneath your knees, like a bolster or a pillow or even a rolled up blanket. Something to support your head and something to place over your body. And maybe something to cover your eyes. And of course, you can take Shavasana any way that you'd like. You can lay on your side, you can be in reclining butterfly, do legs up the wall, or maybe even take a seat in a seated meditation. Once you've found the shape that suits you today, allow your breath to become effortless and rest.
And as always, if you would like to rest longer, feel free to hit the pause button, let the video finish out, and just stay in Shavasana as long as your body needs today. If you're ready to move on, invite a deeper breath back in. Start to bring some gentle movement back into your fingers and into your toes. Circle out through your ankles and wrists. Maybe a gentle tilt of your head from left to right. When you're ready, draw your knees into your chest, roll to one side or the other, and press yourself up to find a seat. Draw your hands at your heart center in gratitude for giving yourself this time, showing up for yourself. Bow your head down towards yourself, acknowledging all your effort and energy. Thank you so much for sharing your practice. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, leave a comment. And if you are brand new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so that way you know when new videos are up. And if you know anybody that could use some more yoga in their life, share my channel and this video. And I will see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Bye.